I'm Birgit Marga and this is the Service Design Show. In the Service Design Show, we talk to people that are shaping the service design field about the current state of the industry, exciting new developments and challenges up ahead. Today, I'm talking to Birgit Marger. Birgit is, of course, the co-founder and president of the Global Service Design Network, and she has been a service design professor in Cologne for over 20 years. Welcome to the show, Birgit. Well, great to have you here, me here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. Uh, Birgit, I was looking in uh, our uh, archives here at uh, 31 Falls, and I stumbled upon something that we both uh, recall very well. This is the very first edition of the Touchpoint, uh, the magazine of the Service Design Network, April 2009. And it actually features something that is coming up again. And I'd like to start with that. And that is the, let me see if I can find a very nice picture. It's a small picture here, actually. I, you probably won't see it. But this was the uh, global conference in 2008 in Amsterdam, right? Yes. That's amazing. I mean, you're really privileged to hold one of these uh, first uh, touch point issues. They are sold out for, I think, four years now, and uh, people are hunting them already. So, um, yes, and uh, in 2008, you and I were part of the conference team uh, uh, doing the very first service design uh, global network conference ever. And it was quite a challenge, and I thought it was super successful. I think you guys convinced me to do it. I, I still I think recall our, our meetings in Eindhoven and in uh, Utrecht uh, very well. Um, yeah, you, you said it's going to be successful. We are going to have more than 200 people there. And I said, okay, you are very self-confident, my dears. <laughs> and you were right. I think we had almost 250 people in Amsterdam on the very first conference. Uh, and it was an amazing conference. Uh, well, talking about amazing conferences, uh, Birgit, uh, we're now in March of 2016, and uh, there is some news, right? Yes, exactly. Thank you for asking me. We are going to have uh, the ninth uh, Service Design Global Conference again in Amsterdam. So we're coming back, and we are expecting approximately 650 participants. So we have grown a bit, and I think we could be even bigger, but uh, we have um, consciously decided not to have more than 650 people because Service Design Network conferences have always been a bit of this family feeling. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think um, we have to make sure that we don't become a conference machine where suddenly we do not really relate to each other in a personal way. So, yes, we will be back in Amsterdam in October. And uh, I hope to see many, many familiar faces and, of course, also new faces joining us there. So the conference is coming back to Amsterdam. That's really exciting news. Uh, and what, what is the place that people who are looking at this video can find more information about the conference? Well, I think you should just go to service-design-network.org and uh, this is where we, you will find the latest news about the Amsterdam conference, but also about another one-day conference that we will be doing end of June in London. Uh, the UK service design community is one of the most active besides the Dutch community. Mm. And so uh, we decided to have a one-day conference there on June 30th. And uh, you will also find the information on Service Design Network org website. We'll, we'll also post uh, any relevant links uh, in the video comments below so that uh, anyone who is uh, interested in the conference will be able to find it really easily. Really excited to, uh, to have the conference back in the Netherlands. It's, uh, it, it feels like uh, we're, 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 we've grown, but we're back again. Birgit, this is, a, this is an interesting question because I'm really curious if you have an in answer. Um, what is your first memory of service design? When did you ever get in touch with service design? My first memory is sitting uh, together with Michael Erlhoff and Fritz Heubach, two very dear friends of mine, eating oysters. And uh, Michael Erlhoff said to me, you know what, wouldn't you like to become a professor of service design? And I almost, uh, you know, died uh, swallowing the oyster too fast. And I said, uh, no, <laughs> because I had never heard of service design before. And I think Michael Erlhoff was one of the pioneers using that term. 
Um, and um, it took me a while to, to bring together service design with what I was doing at that time. I was being an organizational um, and HR uh, a person, organizational development and HR person at the time. And I was helping in the transformation of, of uh, organizations from product and technology mm -hmm. focus to more of a solution and service focus. So in, in a way, I was designing uh, service organizations and, and helping to, to change educational processes, cultural settings uh, to be more service and solution focused. But I had never mm, thought that I could be um, the one to develop the discipline of service design. And uh, yeah, that was maybe in 1992 or 1993 when I was almost, almost dying uh, on an oyster in so, Cologne. Uh, what, what eventually convinced you to, uh, to become that professor? I think the idea never let go. After I heard that term for the first time, I started to dive into service marketing and um, and what, what what would be different if designers would be looking at this. So I was constantly thinking about the contribution that design could make to a world with better services. And I saw many, many opportunities. Um, I think from the very first time I heard that word and I started to think about it. A little bit uh, nice history that I don't think a lot of people know. Uh, oh, I think you're the first one I ever told about the oysters. <laughs> well, 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 we might use it as a title for this uh, episode. We'll see. I thought, well, I have to say, you could really think that while while we were, you know, sitting there, I found a pearl in oysters, and it has been growing ever since. Yeah. Well, that's that's a nice metaphor, Birgit. Um, we have a format for the show, uh, uh, and as service designers, we believe in co-creation. So uh, we're going to co-create the questions, and let's just explain to the viewers how this works, right? So I have some topics that you gave to me on the things we want to talk about, and in my most beautiful handwriting, I've written down something on a piece of paper, and you also have a stack of papers, right? Can you show them? Yes. So I'll hold up a topic and you hold up a question starter and we'll take it from there. That's how easy the format works. Co-creation in action. I will start with, uh, with the first topic and it's the topic of uniqueness, Birgit. Okay. Uh, how can we make sure that the uniqueness of service design will be uh, saved. This is one of the concerns that I'm having because service design has, uh, I think, developed in an amazing way. I think we have developed the discipline. We have many amazing people out there. We have great projects out there. Um, but still, I feel that uh, these buzzwords of uh, design thinking and service design are always endangered to be watered down by service marketing approach or by the business approach that uh, take them, chew them and spit out something very fast. Mm -hmm. So uh, just recently I read this um, article by McKinsey on journeys and touch points and I thought, oh wow, they are talking about journeys and touch points and I read through the article and service design wasn't even mentioned. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, the marketing people and the business people are very smart and very fast in taking words and, you know, using them and then throwing them away. I think service design in itself is a, is a slowly growing and very consciously and very solidly growing discipline. And we just have to make sure that we are not, you know, harmed by this uh, very fast digestion of buzzwords and uh, yeah, using them and throwing them away. So it, that's it, a bit of a concern yeah. of mine. Is this, is this maybe a part of the uh, success uh, service design has been having for the, over the last years? It's part of the success. Uh, I think the, the conferences, the publications and the practice of service design have really shown the value. 
Um, but it's also maybe an indication that we need to be stronger and putting our claims out there and putting these claims as service design and making sure that these the methods and tools that we are using are seen as part of a bigger concept and a more holistic approach. And that in the end, uh, it's not that, oh, yes, journeys, I've heard it before, so let's move forward. And I think we have to make sure that we communicate strongly as service design community, that we put our claims there. And I think that's all the service design network is aiming at, that we join our forces as service designers and make sure that we are heard as a voice of service design out there with its uniqueness. So um, a topic that uh, relates to uniqueness but also concerns me is, well, Focusing on, on uh, what really service design is and uh, de maybe defining it um, has a, can have a sort of a downside effect because a lot of people talk about service design, customer experience, user experience design, and I don't think we want to create new silos. So that it's, it's really interesting to, to, to still have the uniqueness of service design but not uh, exclude ourselves from the other design disciplines. How do you see that? I think you're totally right. I think there is, for one thing, a lot of overlap between service marketing, service innovation, uh, user experience. So I think there are many uh, neighbors that we are having. Um, still, I think that uh, we need to make sure that the design in service design stays strong. Right. I, I right. can teach organizations service design skills. I can teach them design process and methods. And still, I think, I strongly believe that in a service design approach is different from what uh, an organization does that has gone through a one-day service design seminar. So, uh, yes, we need to collaborate to bridge the different disciplines, and still, I think we need to strengthen the design within the service design. Yeah, so that's also a, a topic we, uh, we are strongly focused on. It's, it's the design part within service design that really makes it stand out from well, other, other disciplines that are related to, to us. And I think it's funny, the designers should be really strong com communicators, but I find that the marketing people and the business people are in a way like stronger in pushing their worldview out there. And, uh, and uh, as a designer, so we, I think we really have to join our forces to make sure that we are seen and heard and that the uniqueness of the design within the service design is not you know, taken by others and uh, used and put in waste. Right, yes, we agree on the topic, absolutely. Um, let's move on to, the, to a second topic. Let's do this in the middle. This is uh, called the Service Design Day. Okay. What if? What if? What if on June 1st, 2016, more than 1,000 service designers worldwide would do something that makes service design buzz. So that's the idea, and that idea was born just a couple of weeks ago when we thought about strengthening design and service design, and when we thought about what could we do as a community to create awareness for service design, uh, to create hunger for service design and to make service design strong. And the idea is that on June 1st, um, 2016, for the very first time, we will call it the Service Design Day. We, we will invite service designers all over the world to do some small activity that will make service design buzz. All right. And we as a Global Service Design Network will make sure that there is a platform where all these thousands of activities will be seen and heard. And we will make sure that the media all over the world will talk about the Service Design Day. So it's one of these activities that we as a community can do to make service design strong and to create this feeling of uniqueness and connectedness that uh, yes, we have as designers. How can we contribute to a service design day? What do we need to do? do some, yeah, yeah, do something, um, think about something that will make people look 
and listen to service design, post your plan on hashtag FDDay. Hashtag SD day. Yes. Uh, we will communicate that hashtag within the next couple of uh, hours, basically. Post your plan on hashtag SD day, and then let us hear what, in the end, will be the the impact of your service design day activity. So hashtag SD day will be uh, promoted. We will have um, a big um, united view. Of on all the activities all over the world under that hashtag. And um, yes, uh, in the next couple of days, we will start pushing it out. And if you think you could sit in front of the city hall of um, of Den Haag or uh, Amsterdam or Utrecht and have a big sign in your hand and say, Mayor, you need service design. And just you know, raise a conversation with the city hall about service design and the impact it could have. So any big or small event and activity that will make service design buzz is welcome on the service design day. Are there any activities that you know of already which you are excited about or is it still work in progress? It's work in progress, yes. Uh, but I assume that by next week you will be able to see the first uh, creative and, and, and interesting ideas uh, underneath our hashtag. Excellent. So follow the hashtag SDDay. Exactly. Is this something that you plan to organize uh, or stimulate every year? Will this be a recurring event? Yes. It's something that should happen every year and uh, it's also something that should happen as a co-creation process. For example, here in Cologne, um, we will be inviting all the active service designers for a co-creation session in order to get the best ideas of what we will do on uh, SD Day. And I hope that many others will also co-create events and little buzzing activities. It's not planned to be like big things. It's not supposed to be conferences or workshops. It's more like funny things that make you stumble over service design. And um, yeah, I'm sure that this community will come up with amazing things. And I think it's a good um, activity um, that is well going to join in the forces with the, the, the service jam and other activities that we already have. But mm, I think it, it's worthwhile investing some energy in coming up with good ideas. Will we hear something about the Service Design Day at the conference? Sure. We will give a wrap up. Nice. Best of. All right. Service designer, um, well, I need to think about what we'll be doing at uh, 31 Volts with that. Still, uh, still no I'm ideas. Sure, but we are going to highlight the best activities uh, in early June, so we will monitor what's happening and there will be a best of collection. And I'm pretty much convinced that your chances to be among the best of are pretty good. Well, thank you for the confidence, Birgit. <laughs> We have uh, one more topic we want to uh, uh, cover, and I think it's a very relevant one, and it's a really um, important one for us as a service design community, and that's the topic of impact and implementation. Okay, so let me take the how much... How much? Um, yeah, how much value does service design create? And um, I think that's a super relevant question still. It's not totally new, but it's been on my mind for the last couple of years. Uh, and there's different um, facets to this question. I believe that service designers tend to be very much focused on the exploration and the ideation phase of a project. And that um, we still have a bit of a weakness when it comes to the uh, implementation part of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, we need to focus on, on developing our competencies, our capacities, our methods, our tools for implementation. Uh, one of my BA students, uh, Lena Hammers, did a very interesting research. Uh, she uh, mapped all the methods and tools that service design is using and talking about. And it's really interesting to see how, how strong we are when it comes to, to exploration methods, to ideation methods, and how thin the layer gets when it comes to implementation. 
Now, of course, you could say implementation, that's, you know, where the business people should roll up their sleeves and get it done. But I believe that the quality of implementation is very much depending on what, on what is done in the early phases mm -hmm. of a project. So I think that we as a service design community should be focusing also on our capacities and our unique contribution to the implementation phase of projects. And maybe there's one more for set because I said how much. Uh, it also means that, that we need to prepare the evaluation of the value that we create through the projects. And we have to think about that from the very beginning. If we are not able to measure the value that we are creating with the project, it will be very difficult for us to communicate and to sell service design. And in the end, that's what we also need to do. We don't only need to be super creative and, and conceptual, but we also need to be selling uh, our capacities and uh, our potential impact. Well, that, this is, of course, a, a discussion I think a lot of service designers are having with their clients is uh, how do we um, explain the, the value that you've created or uh, related to the uh, project some. And a lot of the times the discussions are about we cre created awareness or created new insights or created, well, all those soft and, and, and non-tangible things. Change. Yeah, but they want measures. And I think we need to learn to speak the language of our potential clients. And we need to be able to to translate the value that we have created into KPIs, into some kind of measures that they understand. Um, that's quite interesting. In uh, last year, the Service Design Network for the first time launched the Service Design Award. And uh, for the Service Design Award, you can only um, uh, contribute projects that have been implemented mm. and uh, where the value that they have created has been measured. And I was really surprised, positively surprised, how many projects we collected uh, that have really been implemented, that have really created value and where the value has been measured. Mm. Uh, and uh, this year, again, we are doing the Service Design Award and the um, call for contributions is open until... Uh, I think 27th of May, and I think this this kind of like you know showcasing the um, projects that have been implemented and where the value has been proven is very very helpful for the service design community as a whole. So this is one of the yeah, you've been in the industry for 20 years, and this is a very relevant development at this stage. If we fast forward like five years and we look back at this period, what what do you think has happened? What, what do you see upcoming on the horizon related to this topic? Well, I definitely see that um, many companies will have installed service design as an in-house competency. I do observe that under the roof of business innovation labs or design labs, service design plays a very important role. And I see that very many of the big players are building that capacity within their organizations. So I think that will become more or less a state of the art. Um, I also see that more and more um, of the big consultancies will buy service design competency. I think John Maeda has shown it quite nicely in his uh, um, uh, research that, that uh, the design and the service design are very appetizing to the big players. I think the last the big merge was uh, Vipro buying Designit. Um, before we had Capital One going for Adaptive Paths, we had Accenture going for Fjord. I think this is a trend that will continue. And last but not least, I do see that uh, on the um, educational level, uh, more and more universities will be teaching service design. And that is also something that I see as a big um, challenge for the service design network to to push more educational and more academic um, development in the market because uh, if we create hunger for service design, we also have to make sure that there is uh, yeah. a great education and great service designers are available on that market to be hired. I, uh, I agree and what interests me is the, when you talk about the the fact that service design is becoming more and more uh, in-house capability within large companies. 
Um, I'm really curious if that will lead to uh, more necessity for explaining the value or the fact that it's a capability actually uh, re requires less explanation of the value. So it could, I think it could go both ways. You're right. And I don't know which way it's going to go either. In a, in a way, I tend to think that it will require less explaining uh, because it will become quite natural to do service design as you do product design or graphic design or interface design. I think it will become quite natural to, to be working with service design. Uh, so I, I assume there will be less explanation necessary. Yes, and, and less ex explanation and also in, in, in that fact, less explanation about the value it creates. You know, the, yeah. the need to prove the value because we know how it works and we, un we understand the value. So it, it will be a, a, a debate between service design as a capability and service design projects. I think mm -hmm. service design projects exactly. still will need to explain the value and maybe quantify the value. But service design as a capability, uh, I think that will be less. Yeah, and you know that uh, we have started to build a case study database a couple of years ago and it is like constantly growing. And I think also this case study da database builds the backbone of, of the proof of value. Uh, and uh, I think that's really important, uh, especially for young agencies. You know, they start out, they strongly believe in service design, they are very passionate about it. But how, how do you explain what you're doing and how do you convince your potential client that it's worth it? So... I think you have to be relating to some kind of either uh, academic uh, papers that um, prove the value, or you go to case studies and say, look what they've done and look how it can be done. Yeah, that, that is the, the, the benefit of the fact that service design is just growing, growing. The number of case studies is increasing and uh, we have more stories to tell. Exactly. That's great. And I think it's great that you have the, the uh, channel to, you know, to share with people the stories yeah that's exactly uh, what we're doing and what we're aiming for with with the with the show one one of my uh, final questions Birgit and you probably as a professional service design get this question quite often for people that want to get into service design uh, people who are not in the service design industry right now what would be your single most important tip you could give them I'm sorry, I'm not really sure if I got the question. Is it more like people that are on a uh, search for education or more companies well, it, that I want? It could be anyone coming up to you and asking you, well, I want to get into service design. Um, what should I do? Go to Amsterdam in October. It's not only a great city to visit, it's also a great place to learn about service design, to dive into the network, to make great connections. So I would say go to Amsterdam in October. And if we can't wait to go to Amsterdam? Yeah, then go to London in June. <laughs> <laughs> go to London in and June. And if you can't wait for June, go on the Service Design Network or website and dive into all that content uh, from Touchpoint. You have shown the very, very first um, uh, print copy and uh, it has grown ever since. So dive into all those amazing materials, the case studies, the publications that um, we have gathered throughout the last years. And you will be very, very knowledgeable about the, the landscape of service design dive into the material. I think that's that's a good thing. Um, is there a question you'd like to ask the viewers, the people who are watching this episode? Is there a question you have for them? Yes, um, let me know what can Service Design Network do for you. Uh, I would be really interested to know what kind of support, initiative, uh, um, equipment do you need and uh, what could Service Design Network be doing for you. So really feel free to, to Twitter me, to um, mail me, to post it uh, on the website. So please, please let us know. We'll add all the contact details uh, about that. So, uh, Birgit, I think uh, we're going to wrap up. Uh, again, thank you very much for your time. I know how busy you are, so uh, I'm really happy that you made the time. What are your thoughts about the topics we discussed today? And if you have any suggestions on who we should invite next to the show, be sure to let us know down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode and like to see more interviews with service design pioneers, be sure to subscribe and check out some of our past episodes. 
With the service design show, we help you to stay one step ahead by talking to the people that are shaping the service design field. Thanks for watching.